The following program deals with controversial subjects. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. The viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all available information. Tonight on Sightings, have our shuttle astronauts captured photographic proof of real Star Wars between extraterrestrials and our military? Then, for almost two centuries, this small Texas town has witnessed bizarre glowing balls of light. Are they natural phenomenon or alien spacecraft? Tonight, the mystery of the Marfa lights. Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. Tonight, startling new pictures of a UFO encounter that has top analysts locked in a heated debate. The authenticity of the pictures is above suspicion because they were taken by specialists aboard the space shuttle Discovery. For the past year, the United States government has avoided discussing what is potentially the most important 30 seconds of video footage to have emerged from the U.S. space program. The footage looks fairly innocuous, but some believe that something is going on here NASA doesn't want us to know about. On September the 12th, 1991, STS-48 lifted off into space for what NASA officials expected to be a routine shuttle mission. But what Discovery's cameras would capture high above the Earth during that mission would prove to be anything but routine. I heard uh, one or two of the astronauts uh, exclaim from shortwave radio, what is that? What is that? NASA says the objects could be space ice, satellites, or debris. Ufologists interpret the footage as either alien spacecraft engaged in armed battle or an armed response to alien spacecraft by SDI, the so-called Star Wars defense system. This particular day, they were they're flying over the Philippines. You'll see uh, what looks like stars in the sky, and then you'll see these objects off to the right of the screen. Within a couple of minutes, you will see an object come out of the clouds. Uh, to the north part of your screen, and it's heading to the north-northwest. In about four or five seconds, you'll see a flash in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, and then you'll see a streak of light go by that object. Just missed it there, and the one in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. What's being enacted up there is basically uh, a contact with a, an alien civilization, and that those particular craft are not from here. The flash that we're seeing is probably a mechanism of Star Wars. Is this finally concrete proof that we're being visited by intelligent life from another planet? Space industry officials answer with an emphatic no. A lot of things we see on the picture from space are things we're used to seeing here in the control center down here in Houston. Uh, they're ordinary events that surround the spaceship. Pieces coming off, uh, water dumps, pieces of ice insulation. They're just little pieces, 10, maybe 20 feet away from the camera. And as they're flowing across the, uh, the field of view of the camera, there's a flash of light as one of the maneuvering jets on the shuttle fires under autopilot control. Anything floating out there is like uh, opening your door on a windy day and watching the dust in your house blow out. The burst of uh, gas from the jet pushes these little pieces of debris, and off they go. If that is true, why doesn't the horizon line and the curvature of the Earth's latitude change when that rocket fires in the upper left quadrant or to the west side? And NASA's explanation defies the laws of physics, according to University of Nebraska at Omaha physicist Dr. Jack Katcher. NASA's claim is that these are all pieces of ice and that this flash down here was an attitude rocket adjuster to adjust the position of the shuttle so it's going to push it in a certain direction and the exhaust came up like this. Well, if that happened, then, then the particles should move up in this direction. Those two pretty well fit that scenario, but I have a real problem with the rest of them because, uh, first of all, this one just starts here and continues on down this way, just straight the whole time. Now, that's the wrong direction for an exhaust in this direction, too. So I really have a lot of trouble seeing how you could make an explanation like that work. Analysis by aerospace propulsion expert David Froning refutes NASA's belief that the objects are conventional spacecraft. 
its behavior doesn't look like a normal orbital debris. To make a turn like that in a conventional vehicle would just be impossible. And to, to do that, you really have to actually warp and twist space. These certainly do appear to be objects that are intelligently controlled. NASA has issued several statements insisting the UFOs are chunks of space ice, but they refuse to comment on two additional sightings that occurred later in the mission. Here, one object is intercepted by a rocket-like projectile. The object continues as more projectiles pass. Later, on the dark side of the Earth, another object comes into view. Soon, a second, faster-moving object nearly collides with the first, then continues out of frame. What if, then, they were extraterrestrial craft? Uh, well, then, there have, are some very scary things happening here. Was it some kind of a missile that uh, we were firing at them with? And if that's the case, then why did we do that? It implies we're prepared to do that, that we're almost expecting to encounter these things, and then we're hostile to them. Is our military prepared to launch offensive strikes against incoming UFOs? Government officials won't respond. It's not a question of whether there is a government cover up about UFOs. There is. It's the most highly classified topic in all the government and military. Has the military secretly developed SDI beyond public knowledge, despite their denials? There have been developments for the Space Defense Initiative of particle beam systems that could have particle beams with the kinds of speeds that we saw uh, going straight up into space. And if that is the case, why are we shooting at them? It implies that uh, we expected to see them and that we were ready to shoot and then we did shoot so we considered them hostile you can look at these kind of lights and these kind of reports of uh, the flying saucers coming around our spaceships um, in terms of exploration this is very traditional these are our sea serpents these are our mermaids uh, 500 years ago when columbus's ships went out and the, and the men peered off at the horizon they could see little things in the horizon they, be, they would misinterpret them or interpret them in different ways or, or incorrect ways and come back and tell stories. We're getting into the same sort of phenomena here. Well, first of all, a death ray or a laser beam that's in the Hollywood movie shows up as a flash of light and a crash and a thunder and, and so forth. That's Hollywood. In reality, these kinds of beams in space are invisible because they have nothing to, uh, to show up on except a, a target. So you would not see a beam going across the picture. James Oberg has devoted the last 18 years to aerospace research. Although Oberg insists he is an independent analyst, some ufologists believe he's part of a secret government conspiracy to debunk all UFOs. It's a bit too trite and a bit insulting to the intelligence of the average American to say, uh, you know, it's something to do with space folklore or space debris. Let's not forget that these people are not some kind of UFO organization speaking for uh, 10,000 scientists out there. These are a couple of uh, very far out people who are not even accepted in the UFO movement. Is this merely ice from the space shuttle? Secret weapons testing the military won't disclose. Or is this finally proof that we're not alone in the universe? It's only a matter of time, but I would wager by 1995, this will be common knowledge. And the fact that extraterrestrials are here will be accepted by everybody. For a further perspective on the space shuttle footage, we've asked University of Nebraska at Omaha physicist Dr. Jack Kasher to join us. Dr. Kasher, thanks for coming in. Appreciate your time. What evidence can you cite, sir, that those lights that we saw on the tape aren't conventional satellites? Well, I think the strongest evidence for me is uh, I sat down and I, I put a transparency in front of a television set and I tracked uh, eight of those objects both before and after the flash. And, and the main one did cut up sharply to the right, apparently in response, if you would believe the ice theory of, of uh, an attitude adjuster rocket down here that would push it up with it, its exhaust. Two of the eight objects did that. Four uh, just continued, didn't react. Two went up and to the left, which is the mm -hmm. wrong direction. And I, I, I've looked at that 50, 100 times. I just can't reconcile that in my own mind. Have you been ostracized at all by the scientific community for, for holding these particular beliefs? Not really. You'd be surprised at the physicists that have come up after they've heard me speak about UFOs and, and say they're really surprised that there is evidence that is at least plausible that these things are real. You sort of went out on a limb, uh, Dr. Kasher. You said that by 1995 these kinds of uh, sightings would be commonplace. Why 1995? Do you know something the rest of us don't? 
Well, I do have some contacts that uh, have given me some information, and I think I base some of it on that. But I think that there is a groundswell of, of interest in UFOs. People are being more open about the sightings that they have had. And uh, that just builds up. And, and eventually, what are you going to do when, when your friends tell you they have actually seen flying saucers uh, hovering above their houses? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, uh, after that happens to you a number of times, you, you just have to start believing some of it. Dr. Kesher, have you seen a UFO yourself or anything that would lead you to personally believe that they're out there? Well, I haven't seen anything as spectacular, say, as a flying saucer, but I have seen lights in the sky that, that behave in a strange way that, that you couldn't explain in terms of normal airplanes. And, and I do teach astronomy. I know where the constellations are and what meteors are, so I can differentiate between those things. And, and the object that I saw were not airplanes, and I'm not really sure what they were. Dr. Jack Kasher, thank you very much. And we will be back with more sightings in just a moment. Coming up next, what are these bizarre glowing balls of light? Some say natural phenomenon, some say alien spacecraft. We investigate the mystery of the Marfa lights. Astronomers know what causes the aurora borealis, those spectacular multicolored curtains of light known as the northern lights. But there is also another lesser known light phenomenon occurring in the night skies all over the world. And it has continued to defy explanation for almost two centuries. It started out very slowly, but very brightly. There was a single bright yellow light. It was brilliant. The closer it got, it changed to a kind of a silvery green orb. It seems to dance or move in a rhythmic way. And then they go up into the sky, and, and when they're up there, what, well, they just uh, have a big party up there. They weren't hostile. They were very, very friendly, it seemed. They didn't chase us. They didn't descend on us, and they were soft in color yellows, soft greens, blues. I don't think there's any question about it. The lights are there. Marfa, Texas is a small town southwest of El Paso. For the past 150 years, residents, visitors, and scientists have all looked into the night sky and seen dazzling multicolored lights, dubbed the Marfa lights. Reported sightings date from Apache accounts in the early 1800s to the Wall Street Journal in 1984. I think they're Satan's people, tell you the God's truth. They're ghost lights, and it's ghosts. <laughs> it was just eerie to me. Nobody else was afraid, but I was afraid. Lifetime resident Vern Campbell took these photographs of the lights using time-lapse photography. And I saw this light coming across the area and moving toward the power line. And I assumed that it was following the power line toward me. And I stood transfixed. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was scared, uh, very badly frightened. I don't know what they are. I don't claim to know. I'm not sure I even want to know. But I know that they do exist. In America, there are at least 100 zones that are regularly haunted by these curious light phenomena. Uh, one of the most famous uh, places is Marfa. Paul Devereaux is a London-based earth sciences researcher who believes geology holds the answer to the Marfa lights. These lights, nobody knows what they are. They're rather exotic phenomena. Uh, they're not UFOs. They're not flying saucers. Uh, they're somehow produced by the Earth itself. Right now, an international team of scientists is in Marfa seeking an explanation to the light phenomenon. The team is headed by one of the top physicists in the world, Yoshihiko Atsuki. This is a research work on the uh, fireball. Uh, so-called uh, uh, Marfa light. Uh, we uh, believe this is a kind of uh, a natural phenomena. A natural phenomena means uh, some, this is uh, some kind of uh, uh, atmos atmospheric electricity. The team has established a base camp just north of the official viewing site open to the public. State-of-the-art atmospheric technology has been flown in and set up all manner of recording devices are also in place. Since the team does not know the true source of the Marfa lights, they also acknowledge the spiritual. A Buddhist priest performs a ritual he believes will summon the lights. Early in the investigation, the team was frustrated. The lights did not appear. We watched and watched, but nothing we obtained, nothing filming. 
uh, nothing uh, eyewitness observation. So we was uh, very disappointed. Mission specialist Ed Hendricks tried out new detection devices while the team waited. Hendricks' obsession with the Marfa lights began on February 2nd, 1991, when he had his first sighting. I was flabbergasted. I don't think I've ever been the same since. Uh, I've been fascinated and almost obsessed by it, um, trying to figure out what could possibly do something like that. Hendricks specializes in the science of spherics, the study of the sounds of the atmosphere. He has previously recorded strange sounds which accompany the appearance of the Marfa lights. They're long kind of descending pitch signals that sound something like On September 1st, 1992, as Hendricks sent up his equipment, the team's first light suddenly appeared on the horizon. Wow. There it is, it's going again. It's flickering, wow. It's got different colors. It's got red and yellow, and it's flashing. It's flashing very rapidly. Looks almost like a firefly. It's very bright now, it's getting brighter, and uh, it looks a little bit red. It's, it's dividing in two, the two pieces are moving apart. There they go, and they're getting real close, and they've crossed again, and they're just continuing this. They're going back and forth, swinging back and forth, and they're, they're doing this as though, um, this is what I think people mean when they say that the lights are, are doing a dance. I think they're going, I think that's all. What are these dancing, multicolored lights? While this investigative team searches for an answer, other scientists say the lights are nothing more than the headlights of cars traveling on nearby Route 67. I don't believe there are any facts to support the myths. We cannot say that there's no manifestation of the devil or flying saucers or Indian ghosts, but there are no facts to represent that. There are some facts to indicate very strongly that what most people see are car lights on Highway 67. There are people who are skeptical about the Marfa lights and who believe that uh, what everybody sees are car headlights, and indeed many people do see car headlights and, and uh, assume that they're Marfa lights and believe that. But even the, the most serious skeptic, the people who uh, attribute all of the phenomenon to uh, car headlights could not possibly have seen what we saw and conclude that they were looking at car headlights because cars could not be made to do what we saw those lights do. And with the sightings dating back to the early 1800s, car headlights must be ruled out in those cases. Right now, I don't know what they are, and I'm continuing to, to work on that. Uh, I have some more years left, and all, those, all that time I'm going to continue to look at it until I figure it out. We have no facts that illustrate that it's anything beyond the natural. For the people who live in Marfa, the parade of scientists and specialists who work here are just part of life. And so too are the Marfa lights that they have witnessed their whole lives and explain in their own way. It's just there. And it's been there all these many years. And with all these people trying to find what it is, I don't think they will and I hope they don't. It would be nice just to remain the Marfa mystery light. The problem with understanding the Marfa lights is not that they can't be explained, but that there are so many explanations. Theories range from UFOs to headlights to weather anomalies like ball lightning. Some even suggest that the lights are jackrabbits who brushed up against phosphorescent vegetation. But so far, all these theories remain unproven. Coming up next, in a special sightings update from Wisconsin, this man captured a bizarre image with his Polaroid camera that many believe is a ghostly apparition. According to the most recent Roper poll on the paranormal, 18 and a half million Americans report having seen a ghost. One of those people contacted us with a remarkable photograph that he took near his home in Hayward, Wisconsin. Northern Wisconsin is a freshwater fishing paradise, and some say a haven for ghostly apparitions. Skeptics dismiss these stories as folklore designed to lure tourists. But eyewitness accounts are plentiful, and now potential hard evidence has surfaced. An intriguing photograph. I looked up, and here I see this white figure above the tree line, and it's slowly descending towards the trees. 
Al Denninger has been a fishing guide through the waters of the Chippewa Flowage for 17 years. He knows these waters like the back of his hand. But last October, he saw something he couldn't explain. You could see it actually pass through the trees and slowly descend right above the shoreline. And the object was uh, 10, 12 feet tall. I took one picture of the, with the Polaroid. Slowly, this object moved down the shoreline that way, towards the, about towards the west. Moved about 50 yards, stayed there maybe 10, 15 seconds, and slowly ascended right straight up into the sky and was gone. Denninger claims he photographed this apparition of a human form floating above an area locals called Ghost Island. Later, he had his photograph enlarged for better analysis. I had the original looked at by a photo expert. He says, first of all, you can't dupe up a Polaroid. And he says, well, I can't tell you what it is, but whatever it is, it's really there. When word of Denninger's photo got out, more eyewitnesses came forward, claiming they'd also seen the apparition. Two young men were fishing there at midnight, and one of them saw a white-robed figure about eight feet from the ground, sort of floating among the graves. Al sent them the picture, and they called up and says, that is what we saw. Stories of discontented spirits haunting Ghost Island have existed since Wisconsin's Chippewa River was dammed in the 1920s, causing floodwaters to engulf the island's historic cemetery. Most of the graves were moved to higher ground, but locals worry about the plots that were left behind. Could the apparitions be restless souls searching for their displaced loved ones? I've always had an open mind, and I've always figured that uh, you're a little naive to think you're probably the only one in this universe, but uh, whatever I saw, it definitely wasn't from anything I've ever seen before. If you photographed or videotaped what you believe to be a ghost, or if you had an encounter with the paranormal, our sightings investigative team wants to know. To report your sighting, call 1-900-740-SITE. That's 1-900-740-SITE. Each call 75 cents a minute. Average call lasts two minutes, and you must be 18 years or older. Again, to report your paranormal experiences, call the sightings hotline at 1-900-740-7483. On the next sightings, a satanic deliverance gets out of control. She began to, to punch, to kick, to bite. And leaves this woman maimed and bloodied. Was it an overzealous exorcist or the demon himself? On the next sightings. Join us next time for new investigations into the unexplained. For sightings, I'm Tim White. Good night. Coming up next, Fox's Friday Night Search Party continues with an all-new episode of the only crime series where you, the viewer, uncover the clues. Likely suspects. And tomorrow, you'll laugh out loud at the new Fox comedy and the tradition of in living color, The Edge. A lot of shows claim to be outrageous, but only one takes you to The Edge. Tomorrow, after a full hour of cops and an all-new Code 3. Now, stay tuned for Likely Suspects.